Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another session with the Nikon Z8 mirrorless camera. We're going to talk about a photo shoot with Rod Marr where he actually produced a video and still photography with the Z8. Well, let's get started by looking at his video right now. Rod, thank you for being with us. That, that video was pretty powerful, very impactful, very short film, but really impactful. The penalty kick, the tension between two athletes. I thought that was pretty remarkable. Talk a little bit more about the creative and where this concept came from. To me, the essence of sports is competition. So we wanted to use the, the minute, two minutes that we were gonna use in this video to kind of distill everything that I could try and capture in stills in one two thousandth of a second. Now I'm shooting a video in a little bit longer format. Now we've got moving images. So juxtaposing the person taking the penalty kick versus the goalkeeper, kind of telling that story and then flashing back to kind of the training and the preparation and then wrapping it back up with the kind of the penultimate moment there is what we were trying to achieve. So you and I have known each other for many years. I've only known you to be a still photographer. When we right. talked about the Z8 project, you wanted to jump in a video. What was that like for anybody that is afraid to leap into video. Are you saying I was afraid to leap into video? Uh, listen, I'm okay, not saying right. afraid. I was, I was a little apprehensive. I think like a lot of people who've spent their lives doing stills, now they see video on the horizon. They've seen it, we've all seen it on the horizon. Now it's here, right? In my job, I have to be able to shoot stills, but I have to be able to tell stories in motion, in video. So the ability to take the Z8 and put it through its paces, kind of explore, and learn how to see in video was, was a great challenge for me. But having the Z8, having a camera that is in the Nikon mirrorless system for me in the family made everything more comfortable. I know where the buttons are, I know where the menus are, I know how to set up the camera. So when I switched the little icon from, cam from still to video, I was comfortable. I wasn't thinking about which button, which menu, all of a sudden I found myself, oh, I'm composing and I'm seeing things now in video. I, uh, I'm a clips kind of guy when it comes to video, so I'm not so afraid of video, but obviously you have to put this thought process together. You're thinking penalty kick, you're thinking the tension between two athletes. Do you storyboard this out? Do you work with a crew? How do you get this all to come together? I do work with a crew and, and you, for me, I work best with a crew. So much of my still photography life is just me and cameras, right? So one of the cool things about doing videos is able to involve people. Had someone uh, that I worked with, with writing and creating a script and storyboarding. And having that, you, you can't be afraid when you learn something new to ask for expert advice so that you can learn. And the quickest way for me to learn was to work with people who have experience in the industry. And so I have friends who are very talented and they do video. And so I relied on them and I learned really quickly that it's not as hard or as, or as mysterious as, you know, I think a lot of us thought it was. Well, being on set, you look like a pro. You look like a person that's done video for a long time. And, you know, on the still side, let's switch a little bit over to that. The, the handling of the Z8. You have used the Z9. What was it like to make that move into still with the Z8 first? Well, the first thing you notice is the compact form, form factor, right? Like for me, I use big burly lenses on 
and big burly cameras, right? 600 millimeter F4. But that's because you, you got the guns to handle that burly, right? I mean. <laughs> it says the guy whose arms bursting out of his shirt. No, what I would say is I rely on a camera where I can shoot in the rain. It's built to shoot in the rain for three and a half hours, or it's, I'm, it's built to be in five degree weather, kind of all the extreme things that I find myself uh, photographing in as a professional sports photographer. This camera is more compact, but it retains so much of the same capabilities, which I love because it has the compact form factor. And when I'm using video, what I quickly found out, this you can mount, you can rig, you can do lots of things with video with this form factor. And I really appreciated that about the Z8. Yeah, one of the hallmarks I think we've learned of the mirrorless system within Nikon as it grows with Z9 and as we roll into the Z8, Autofocus is impeccable. The framing rates are, are, I would think, perfect for sports and action photography. We have technologies and pre-focus now that allow you to do different things. How important was it to be able to pick up the Z8 and have a lot of the capabilities and firmware updates that came with the Z9 to be ready to go in the Z8? Yeah, I tell people it's like a cheat code now. You know, I, I'm old enough uh, to remember the days of manual focus, right? And, and if you could manual focus, that really separated the pros from everybody else. That was a skill. All the technology and the engineering and the advances have made it so now I just really have to concentrate on my vision and what I want to capture, whether it be stills or whether it be video. I'm thinking about imagery. I'm thinking about storytelling. I'm not thinking about, did I get it sharp, right? I can rely on the camera to help me take care of all of that. It allows me to be visual, allows me to be creative. So let's delve into the subjects that you photographed uh, during the shoot on the still side. You know, we did some rugby and uh, whatever that, what's the disc sport? Ultimate. Ultimate disc, yeah. Yes, we did some fitness and we did some basketball. Lots of great action. Yep. Lots of great action. But when we first talked about this campaign and I was, the person kind of in the sports genre, right? So I wanted to challenge the camera and see how it did with peak action. So ultimate and rugby, right? Peak action, two thousandth of a second, four thousandth of a second were freezing peak moments. But I also wanted to see like with fitness, how does it look with portraits and kind of more, com more commercial looks. And then with basketball, it was actually um, a lit action picture that we did. So I wanted to have a range of not only sports, but photographic concepts within that range. Autofocus, so obviously with action, you're gonna shoot a little bit differently than the portraits of the fitness uh, model th that we worked with, the fitness athlete. Um, talk a little bit about your focus modes and what you typically would shoot for a rugby or a disc type situation. Right, well, I was using eye autofocus on all of them because I found that the Z8 was really, really good in no matter which of the focus areas, and I used a lot of wide area large and wide area small, I prefer those because I can, I can find and acquire subjects quicker for me. I mean, there's, a, there's a lots of different focus modes and, and I think people use them for different things. For me, I use a lot of wide area large and small and then um, using it to autofocus on the face because that allows me to grab from a wider area and say the ultimate players. We had two players racing towards us, right? And a disc flying in and you're trying to figure out, is the camera gonna try and focus on the disc? No, because with the eye autofocus, it was tracking the players who were coming right at us, which as we all know, is one of the most challenging things that, that we can ask a camera to do. I don't know that in my career, like you say, going back to manually focusing to track a subject down a football field or a subject coming at us that I have never gotten takes as good as I have with the continuous shooting and almost every frame being sharp. Right. It's, almost, it's sharp. It's a gift, right, to us as sports photographers. You know, I like, I like that term. I think gift is a, is a lot more positive than what I called it, which was a cheat code earlier. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But um, when you were outdoor shooting sports, what were your go-to long telephoto lenses? 402.8. 600 f4. I noticed too that you did a lot of wide angle low low to the ground type shooting too. What, what, what were you shooting then? Well I was trying to take advantage of the compact form factor and the fact that the screen you know the very screen back here tilts out so I can put the camera on the ground I can use the screen 
super wide angle. I really wanted that immediacy. I wanted the athlete jumping over me, jumping towards me, and really kind of getting that depth that 14 millimeters or 20 millimeters can provide that I really don't get to do when I'm shooting pro sports, right? Because you don't want to be 14 to 24 at a pro football game. Like, you know, I mean, I'm a big dude, but I'd get smothered. That's a little wide. That's that, that's, that's, wide. that's impact zone. That's impact zone for sure. I would uh, I then move over to the fitness model or the, the fitness pro that we had uh, inside. First of all, I love that set because the light coming through the window was ideal. You didn't really have to do much of anything. It was the best quality light I've seen in a long time. Talk about how you worked the Z8 in that environment and the types of portraits and action you shot there. Right, I love the set and Kelsey's an incredible athlete and model. And so in that situation, really it was just a matter for me of being able to compose and see and then letting the autofocus of the camera kind of go where I needed it to go as I was composing. So remember, lots of vertical lines in the windows, lots of horizontal lines. I'm thinking about, I'm keeping my lines straight. Sometimes when we're shooting professionally, I, I tell this to a lot of people, we're paying attention to the background as much as we're paying attention to the foreground, right? Like a lot of amateurs, they, they're just looking at the foreground. I'm letting the camera's autofocus take care of her eye and her face so that now I'm composing in a wider, wider view. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I mean, like you say, background is more important than the foreground sometimes. And uh, right. to always be conscious of the distractions, right? Right, so I wanted, I wanted that to be clean and I wanted it to be strong right those were the those were the two words that kind of themed that shoot clean and strong so we had white walls we had lines we had you know basic primary colors you know on our talent and that's kind of where we were going with that yeah and i i, I know that uh, when you approach this we talked it out and you had set days for still photography and then you set a portion of the shoot just for video so now we've gotten through the still work and now you have to focus on the video side of things, right? right? So talk about getting set up for that day and how you approach video and making this amazing piece, you know, with the penalty kick. Right, well, the key was I don't do video. And so while I was shooting the still parts, I was shooting video as well, shooting some video clips, getting used to it, getting used to the Total motion. Test. Yeah, and, and getting used to seeing, you know, while the camera is on a gimbal or rigged in, in various ways. So that when it came time to get to the video day, which was our last day, uh, I could be more focused on, are we telling the story we're trying to tell? Are the visuals, the visuals that are strong and clean and kind of within that kind of genre that we're trying to, the, the, the feeling, the emotion that we're trying to project with the video. When shooting the Z8 on the still side, you have all kinds of settings for autofocus. How much of that translated into how you use the camera on the video side? Did you use the autofocus? Um, I know you were doing scenes where you're running up the stairs, which is probably not the easiest thing with the camera, even on a rig. Uh, how did you approach some of the settings on the video side? Are you talking about the part where I took a, like, one of a couple prototypes in the world and ran up the stairs vertically while not looking where I was going while aiming the camera at somebody? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was great because I, again, right? Cheat code, or as you called it, I don't know, smart. Gift. Gifted. It's a, it's a it was gift. a gift. It's yes. a gift. I was able to do that, kind of run upstairs, hold the camera behind, kind of aim it at her general area. And remember, she's only probably this far away, right? Because I'm shooting wide angle and the camera kept her in focus the entire way up. So there's a lot of trust and brilliant. confidence in that. A lot of trust and confidence. And I, I have so much trust and confidence in Nikon's mirrorless system after shooting it for a long time that I, and having shot the Z8 in those earlier still shoots, right, with the ultimate, with the rugby, that I knew if I run with the athlete as she's coming up the stairs, that the camera, the autofocus will take care of itself. I just had to make sure I didn't trip, make sure I didn't fall, make sure I didn't trip the athlete. Mm. Always safety first, safety right? Safety first. I just want to know why you were so out of breath the first time you did it, but I we can not talk about your breath. conditioning. That was just for the video. Point. No, but uh, no, I, I, it, to me, it's always amazing to watch it, how it all comes together. So I know you, you photographed uh, the, the first athlete who is going to kick the penalty kick, right. right? And you work with her. Talk about moving around to the different locations and how you kind of went about this, going outside, action, inside, sitting down in a locker room. Uh, the goalkeeper working the weights. Are, are you storyboarding right. all this? Are you 
because to me, I don't, I don't know how I could piece that all together. Right. Everything, everything was storyboarded. A script was written, a basic script, then a storyboard. And then from there, worked with uh, my crew to establish, okay, what does each shot look like? What is what lens for each shot, right? Is it close up? Is it medium close? Is it wide? Are we exterior? Are we interior? And then going back, and this is new for me, having to kind of plan this, right? Oh, if these three shots are all exterior daylight, even though they don't appear chronologically in the film, we're gonna film them first. Then we're gonna go inside when we knew we had that really cool warm light coming through the windows. We're gonna take advantage of that late afternoon light. We're gonna shoot those scenes then Right, and then the climax there, the penalty kick, we want to shoot at night, kind of a game situation under the lights. You get a hint of the stadium lights, you get a hint that the night shot gives a little bit more drama, and then you can contrast that with the day shots, which provides that juxt juxtaposition, right, between practice and the actual competition. So you've made all this great content. We've worked over a couple of days' time. Along the way, you have to start feeding the files into your computer. What's your first impression of what you're seeing? Oh, it's incredible. The, the, the stills are exactly what I expected them to be from Nikon Mirrorless in that, especially right, the fitness photos, the skin tones, the rendition, the fidelity, the color, all right there, very, very minimal correction, right? So once I, and I was using auto white balance. I mean, I trust auto white balance in the Z cameras implicitly and I use it gosh I bet 90% of the time uh, and that doesn't that doesn't mean I'm lazy it just means I trust it I've learned to trust it that said we talked about menu banks there are menu banks that I've set up so that if I'm shooting at night say in the stadium that I shoot in a lot I know what the color temperature is switch the menu bank when we come at night boom everything is right there for me so I, I use the camera that way and I use kind of the intelligence of the camera to kind of program it for exactly what I need. Again, the goal being, I wanna concentrate on what I'm seeing and what I'm creating. I don't wanna be lost in a million menus. I don't wanna be thinking about menus and buttons and switches. I wanna have it all set up. Now I can just think about capturing the moment in stills, capturing the story in video. You know, being with a sports person here, I always remember going back to my first baseball glove and how you took this piece of leather and you shaped it and you formed it to be what you needed it sure. to be as a player. Uh, to have that kind of control with these cameras, I think, is also uh, something that is a gift, if you will. Right. Uh, to be able to not only set the still up the way you need to, the focus points, customize the focus zones into different box sizes. I mean, I, for me, especially photographing baseball, I am now more attentive with focus than I've ever been before. Instead of letting it just run, now it's all situational. Runner's gonna steal a second or a double play, I have a long vertical you know, right. set up. Or home plate, I have a smaller square for where that right. home plate uh, uh, play may be. Right. Um, how do you feel about how you customize the cameras Th that's, for yourself? That's a great question because you know this, but, but people watching this might know this, I'm not the most technical spec oriented photographer. I'm very much a field photographer. I wanna see it, I wanna capture it. So when I talk about taking this camera and going through and setting up menus, it sounds really daunting and, and intensive. And it, it really isn't, but it is learning about your tool because this camera isn't an, old, an older SLR where it's completely mechanical. You do have to learn some things about these cameras, but it's, I, I wanna stress, if I can do it, anyone can do it. I'm not the read the manual tip to toe guy until I really need to. But doing it, I can tell you, pays off so many dividends. This camera is so smart and you can customize it and make it the camera that you really need it to be. I think that's great. And I, I think you've used the word versatile, but uh, who do you think this camera's for? I think this camera's for everyone. I know, I've heard I, you say that. I just no, wanna load that question because I think it's important. I, I really think it is. If you are a pro or an aspirational pro and you're ready to kind of take that next step, say that you're in DSLR still, and you're saying, I just haven't found that mirrorless. You know, I love my D850. Like, I pry it from my cold, dead hands, right? Like, if you want to go to mirrorless, the Z8 is a great place to be. This camera is for everyone. It does still, it does video, it's compact, it fits in everyone's hands. If you're doing video, you can put it on a gimbal, you can handhold it. Um, 
gosh, it's just so much of everything. And, and I really do think it, it, it is for everybody. Yeah, for me, uh, first time in the hands, it was just as powerful as anything else I've ever used, and, and then some um, right. because of, of its size. And uh, you, you had hit on it. It's like, now that you've done this uh, video, right. where do you go next? More videos. Yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> I do. I want to. I want to create more. I want to learn more. And you know, I watch some of the work that other videographers do, and it can seem so intimidating. But you know, I've done my first one. The camera made it easy, right? Now I want to learn more. And I, I know that ten videos from now, I'll look back at my first efforts, and say I would have done this differently. I would have done this differently. But the thing is, the, the Z8 allowed me to create a video without stress or falling into a bucket of tears or throwing my hands up in frustration, right? I was able to have an idea, have a vision, work with a crew, storyboard it, and then execute it, which if you had asked me three years ago, I'd have been like, I don't, I'm not sure I can do that. The camera made, this camera's hybrid, and it made it easy for me. Well, good luck on your new future as a filmmaker. I and, appreciate that. And director and, and camera operator. <laughs> um, and I thought it was a, a, an amazing first attempt and, and certainly backed up by the images and the video that you presented. So Appreciate you. Thanks thank so you much. For, uh, for giving us your insight and thank you for you know, just opening up about what it's like to actually make this transition because I think that's important to a lot of people out there, as you said. Um, certainly uh, the video that we opened up with was great to see. And thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we want to let you see what Rod has done behind the scenes as well um, with a video that was cut by... Uh, one of your colleagues, yep. and uh, lots of energy and intensity in that as well. So thank you for tuning in, and check out Nikon's website and social media channels for more great information on the Nikon Z8. Let's check out this great behind-the-scenes video. Good hit, Seneca! The Z8 is awesome. The autofocus is tracking perfectly. That's insane. I love the versatility of this camera. The size of this makes it so easy to maneuver. I'm able to use a super wide angle lens all the way up to a 400 millimeter on a monopod and it works great. What I'm finding is the Z8 really is a hybrid camera that makes no compromises. The compact form factor makes it perfect to use in the studio, especially in situations just like this. We can get right up into her eye and see the outline of every single one of her lashes. And the other thing that's impressive is how the skin tones hold and like no highlights are blown out. This camera really is a jack of all trades. The shots at 45 megapixels as still and then a flick of a switch and I'm able to shoot video capturing 4K at 120. For someone like me who's not a video expert, having all of this really makes this a hybrid camera that someone like me can use. Today we're on set making a short film with a small crew and two incredible athletes as our talent. We've got a full day, we're shooting day to night, really testing the limits of the Z8 as a video camera. Shooting in various frame rates, in different locations, and multiple lighting situations, all with different color temperatures. It has been incredible. You got it, that's a wrap. Ready. Action.